Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're finally taking a look at food from a Miyazaki movie. Something like bacon and eggs might seem like a very simple place to start, but it's the perfect excuse to learn how to make our own bacon from scratch. First thing we gotta do is cut a big old piece of pork belly down to size. And by down to size, I mean whatever will fit in your intended marination vessel. Then we need to remove the skin. Just try to get the knife under a corner of the belly's skin and peel back from there. Once the skin has been summarily removed, it's time to talk about a cure for our belly, and no, I don't mean Pepto-Bismol. Into a large bowl goes four and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, four and a half teaspoons of coarsely ground black pepper, six packed tablespoons of dark brown sugar, and three quarters of one cup of distilled water. Emphasis on the distilled part. Last but not least, a teaspoon of prog powder number one, or pink curing salt. This can help give the meat its distinct flavor, color, and texture. Once you have tiny whisk these ingredients to a state of dissolution, into a gallon-sized zip-top bag they go with our approximately three pounds of pork belly. Squeeze as much air out of the bag as possible before sealing and place into a nice high-walled container like this casserole, which will help prevent cross-contamination during its three to five day stint in the fridge, during which time we're going to give it a flip once every day to make sure that it is evenly exposed to the cure. This guy's been going for five days, and not only is it pinker in color, it's firmer in texture. And so, my boy is ready to get smoked. Normally I would head out to my buddy Steve's place to use his smoker, but I'm going to try using the stovetop smoker, into which I'm depositing about two tablespoons each of apple and cherry wood. On top of that goes the drip plate, on top of that goes the smoking rack, and on top of that goes the pork belly, which I'm going to naively try and cover with the included smoker cover thing, place on a burner over medium heat, and immediately replace with aluminum foil, because this thing holds in smoke about as good as a college freshman after taking his first bong rip. I'm also going to probe the belly because I want to smoke it, like like that, see, there's smoke. I want to smoke it to an internal temperature of, well, look, there's more smoke, of about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And since these stovetop smokers can only sustainably smoke for about 30 to 45 minutes, we're going to finish it off in a 225 degree Fahrenheit oven for about another hour until it reaches the desired temperature, at which point we are going to unwrap it and chill it completely because what we essentially have here is bacon, a big old slab of bacon, waiting, begging to be sliced. And pork belly is a lot easier to slice when it's nice and chilled. So once this guy's had the chance to hang out in the fridge for at least four hours, out it goes and into it we cut with a long, thin knife. And now, for the first time in your life, you can decide the very thickness of your bacon. Unless, of course, you've ever been to the deli in Whole Foods. But much like bread, bacon just tastes a whole lot better when you made it yourself. Be sure to hang on to all these scraps and end pieces, they're going to be perfect for your next carbonara, select the three or four most symmetrical and photogenic slices of bacon, and get ready for the main event. It looks like Howell was using a carbon steel skillet, but the only one I have is too small for the job, so we're going with cast iron. And this is actually pretty thick bacon, so I'm cooking it over medium-low flame so all the fat renders out and it doesn't burn. Once all the fat renders out and the bacon is mostly cooked, into the frying pan go the eggs. The pan's going to be pretty hot, but that's okay. We want the eggs to develop that nice brown crust around the edges. If the edges are brown, running too quickly and the whites are not setting fast enough for your liking, go ahead and kill the heat and cover the pan. And in one to two minutes, you'll have perfectly cooked sunny side up eggs. Everything might seem a little heavily soaked in bacon grease, but remember that the grease was practically dripping off the plate in the movie. Our eggs are nice and properly cooked, let's try the bacon, it is fabulous. I simply cannot oversell the fabulousness of homemade bacon, it's something you owe to yourself to try. And with the simple additions of bread, cheese, a little bit of salt and pepper, we've got a minimalist but exquisite breakfast. That is literally the first meal that I'm having at the end of my diet, so you bet your ass it ended up in the clean plate club. The only thing that could have possibly made it better would have been an anthropomorphic fire voiced by Billy Crystal eating up all my eggshells. But I will settle for homemade bacon. Mm -hmm. 